Whoa. Apparently we took some LSD. Light that destroys my eyes. The strong headwind pushes my mind and body away from the entrance. The light is too strong for me to perceive what it is. My body, exposed to the wind, is rusting with each passing second. How long will I stay here? An infinity that is not even a second, and in an instant close to eternity. With no sense of time, years change to seconds. Therefore, my body is eternally exposed to the wind, polished and clouded like a mirror and crumbling apart. Oh. Go forward. This place is painful. A zero gravity without any handhold. An, air, an airless vacuum. The world of wind erosion is not a place one can stay in human form. That's why I move forward. My volume doubles with each step I take, and it gets harder to breathe. One step. Two steps. The third step is impossible. I can't go any farther. The wind gets stronger the more I advance, tearing up my body. But I have to move forward if I want to escape. The wind is coming from the other side of the light. The light is the entrance and the exit. The pl this place hurts, so I have to quickly get to the other side. A stronger wind is there once I pass the entrance. Once past this exit, the pain will become lighter. I reach out my hand. I reach out with all my might. The light is in front of me, but I can't reach it. The polar light destroys my eyes. I can't reach it no matter what. It hurts. I can't reach it even if I cough up blood and reach out. Why? It's only a meter away. So why? Why does it feel like I'm trying to head to the distant polar lights? Shiro. Shiro. Oh, it's Ilya again. Yeah, it's probably Ilya. Huh? I wake up. You can't. You'll die if you take it off just because it's painful. Alright, this is because he tried to take off the, um, the Shroud of Martin. So I guess he's going crazy because of that. I blankly stare at Ilya, standing before me. Yeah, trying to take that off was a terrible idea, Shiro. Actually, he did take it off, didn't he? I think he did, yeah. I, I think he did take it off, or he, at least he tried to, I'm not too sure. Ilya, why are you in my room? Because my room is close to yours. I woke early. I woke up early, so I came to look at you. Man, it seems she woke up before me and came here. Well, she just told you that's what she did. I don't care about that, but maybe Ilya but maybe Ilya did so because Hm? Was I having a nightmare? Having some kind of LSD trip or something. <laughs> yep, you were moaning in pain, trying to pull that cloth off your arm. Oh, he didn't do it. That's right, if he did do it, then he would go fucking insane and years off his life would be shaved off. So. Well, I came here because I expected you to do that. I suppressed the pain while you were asleep, so it feels better now, right? Oh. I now notice that my right hand is on the cloth covering my left arm. Oh man, if Ilya hadn't come, I might have taken it off in my sleep. I see. Thank you, Ilya. You don't have to thank me, it's between you and me. And I promised, right? That I'll help you when you're in trouble. Her smile captivates me. She really is more like the little sister type character in this. She was sort of that way in the Fate route too, but that wasn't until later on in the route. And here we meet her earlier and she, you know, we have the whole harem antics thing going on. I, <laughs> we had that too in the Fate route because, you know, we had Saber, but now it's just with like Rin and uh, Ilya and Sakura. Yeah, Sakura wasn't in the Fate route, or she wasn't in the uh, Fate route later on in the route. She was just there in the beginning. Although that's the case with like the first two routes. She's not really there. I know Ilya's just saying that out of kindness, but... <laughs> and I wanted to see your sleeping face. Oh, they made a typo there. You were in pain, but you were trying your best to endure it. You were in pain, but you were... Tr Ugh, even I fucked up because of that. You were in pain, but you were trying your best to endure it. You were so cute. I slammed the brakes on my panicking heart. Ew. Ilya, it's not good to go into someone else's room without permission. Mornings and evenings are out of the question. I'm an ordinary guy, so it's troubling. Why, because you're a pedo? Oh, really? How is it troubling? I want to know in detail. Ugh, even that question is troubling. First of all, you're a girl, so you can't go into a guy's room in the morning. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous. You're not just endangering yourself. You're, you're putting the innocence of an adolescent boy at risk, too. <laughs> God, what the fuck, Shiro? She's like, un well, at least physically she's underage. Mentally, too, but she's somehow, you know, older than what she appears to be. But still, she's underage. Come on. 
Really? But that makes even less sense. What's so bad and what's so dangerous about it? I won't stop unless you tell me why. Ugh. She's kind of like Rin in this instance where she's going to keep pestering us about this just to embarrass us. The silver haired girl puts her hand down, gets on all fours and... What the fuck? See, I'm closer to you now, so why is it troubling for me to come near you in the morning, Shiro? She knows too, I'm sure she knows. She can't be this naive. Y you idiot! <laughs> what the fuck did she do? I roll backwards head over heels while keeping a hold of my futon. That was close. Guys experience a certain physiological phenomenon every morning. I could be given a man's mark of shame if she comes close to me in such an outfit. Oh. Yeah. I hit the back of my head hard. Ugh. Ugh. That's why I, I said it's dangerous. I make up an excuse. Uh, okay, I'm sorry, Shiro. Um, did it hurt? It hurts. I saw stars and my head is throbbing, but I can't be whining if I hear a voice like that. No, I'm fine. It was a good wake-up call, so don't worry about it. I'm sure Rin is just watching this from the doorway. I shake my head and get up. My morning issue is calmed down thanks to that. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, it's about time, so I'm going to go cook breakfast. What do you want, Ilya? If there's anything you don't like, say so now. Uh, no way, you can cook? Well, I can cook like everyone else. I don't, I don't know about western snacks, but I guess I can manage pancakes. Chocolate chip pancakes. Ilya's face lights up. It seems the fact that I can cook is a delightful thing for Ilya. And that was for Saber, too. Pretty much everyone else, actually. It's like, I don't have to cook. That's good. Hmm. Then, do you want to make it together? I thought I'd go get you after breakfast done, but it's better for you to be in the living room if you're awake. Really? Yeah, I'll go. I want to see you wearing an apron. I see. Then, let's be Tosca together with the three of us. I promised Sakura we'd be cooking together this morning, so we'll have the strength of three with your help. No, I'm not going if Sakura's there. You go by yourself, Shiro. God, her toad changed pretty quick. Huh? Why? Because Sakura's there? Do you hate Sakura? No, I actually rather like her, but I can't approve of her because she's not suited for you. What do you mean by not suited, Ilya? It's true. You ought to know why, but you're trying so hard not to notice. Telling you now won't do any good. Because she's a terrible character and she's a terrible heroine. Ilya goes out into the hallway. You should have stuck with Tosika, Shiro. What were you thinking? She's the best girl. And I don't know what kind of chance you were in, but don't keep charging ahead recklessly. You're watching Archer's magic, not Shiro's magic. I know you'll eventually obtain the magic, but there's only the possibility right now. Your body will destroy itself from within if you try projection in such a state. Projection? I repeat Ilya's word absentmindedly. At that instant. Uh-oh. The cocking hammer goes down. I, the dream I saw while I was treated. I vaguely understand what it is and what it means. It's probably projection taken to the utmost limit, reproducing every weapon you've ever seen and making them your own. That's right. Archer's noble phantasm is magic that only he can use. Archer is a blacksmith heroic spirit that can reproduce any weapon he sees. The power is something you can use too now that you've inherited his arm. You're probably not conscious of it now, but you'll remember the activation spell if you put your mind to it. Trace on. But if you don't think about using it just be but don't think about using it just because you can. The priest is right. If you remove the cloth and use projection even once, you'll certainly die. But we're gonna be using it anyway because even if you haven't played this route yet, or if you guys don't know anything about it, you know he's going to use his arm. So don't take it off. No matter what, I won't forgive you if you die like Kiritsugu. I'll never forgive you if you leave me alone before I kill you. That's, um... Okay, then. <laughs> Ilya leaves. Her warning contains both caring strictness and murderous hostility. I don't know how those two can... Can... <laughs> I don't know how she can... Have both at the same time, honestly. Senpai, I'm done cleaning the turnip. How are the chicken wings going? We're cooking chicken wings? Why are we having chicken wings for breakfast? Yeah, I'm done skimming the foam. Let's cook it once we cut these into four pieces. Okay. What are you doing with the curry powder, Senpai? I'm making the sauce. We'll put it on. T we'll put it on the sardines. Even if Ilya doesn't like fish, she should be able to eat it if it's curry flavored, right? 
So fish and chicken wings. That's a really weird combination. I see. You're smart, senpai. Then I'll cut the fish, so please check the simmering. Huh? No, I can cut the sardine without the knife, so you don't have to. I'll ask for your help when I get to the center bones. So can you make the simmered pumpkin with broth and soy sauce? I think we should have at least one sweet dish. So we're having pumpkin, fish, and chicken wings for breakfast. I think I'd rather have, like, fucking Reese's Puffs or Count Chocula. Like, Jesus Christ. Okay. Oh, you look like a sushi chef when you're cutting the fish one-handed like that, senpai. It's like you really know how to use your hands. Sakura goes to the refrigerator. <laughs> Sakura must be feeling better after a good night's sleep because she's in a good mood this morning. Mm -hmm. And standing in the kitchen with her is fun for me too. Sakura is thoughtful and attentive to my needs, preparing things ahead of time. It feels really good to cook with someone like that. Senpai? Senpai. Sushi chef, your hands aren't moving. Huh? Oh, I was spaced out. We should hurry. It's almost 7 o'clock. I sigh so she can't see and continue cutting the sardine. <sighs> sardine is soft, so it's better to use fingers than a knife. It's something even I, with one with my left arm not moving, can manage to cook. But when did you learn such a technique? It's not normal to do it with just your right hand. It's not a technique. It's about timing and determination. I'm sure you can do it too if you try. Oh! Is that so? Yeah, techniques are things like cutting apart a cow with a kitchen knife or making an ice so- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> techniques are things like cutting apart a cow with a kitchen knife or making an ice sculpture. <laughs> cutting apart a cow with a kitchen knife? <laughs> I- I think you'd need more than a kitchen knife to cut a fucking cow apart. <laughs> what the- What kind of analogy is that? <laughs> All right then. Here, take care of the rest. We'll cook it after you're done, so put it in the bowl. I move away from the cutting board and walk to the gas burner. I put the frying pan over the fire and pour some oil onto it. My body knows how to do this, so I abs so I do it absentmindedly. Uh, senpai? Hmm? hmm? I vaguely reply. This might be none of my concern, but did something happen between you and Ilya-san? Uh-oh, she knows. My hand stops, but it's only for an instant. I'm sure Sakura didn't see my disturbance. Yeah, we talked before I came to the kitchen. Ilya has a lot going on. I really don't know how to answer her. Is that a problem as a master? Does Ilya-san still want to fight? No, I don't feel a will to fight from her. No, I don't think she had such a thing from the start. I think she tried to obtain the Holy Grail as a master of Einsburn, but Ilya had another goal. What? That goal disappeared long before the war even started. Ilya's goal. Emiya Kiritsugu, the one she wanted to meet, died five years ago. Then what can I do and what should I do in his place? Nah, hey Sakura, is it alright if Ilya stays here if she doesn't want to go back to her country? Oh, um, this is your house, senpai. My opinion doesn't really matter. What are you saying? This is your house. I can't decide on something important like having Ilya stay without consulting my partner. <laughs> Sakura is embarrassed. Uh, I'm your partner? Yeah, who else would it be? Neither Ilya nor Tosca can help me with cooking this perfectly. Sakura, the frying pan's ready. I take the sardine Sakura prepared. Sakura hands me the sardine with an airy motion. <laughs> what is it all of a sudden? Did she get a fever again? Uh, okay, I understand. I'll do my best to get along with Ilya-san. Yeah, it'll be great if you can. Ilya said she doesn't hate you, so you should be able to get along with her if you talk with her. Yeah, I'll be really happy if that happens. After the Holy Grail War is over, Sakura and Ilya will be here making breakfast without worry. I'll pay any price for such a wish to come true. Oh god. Look who it is. Good morning. You two sure are up early on Sunday. <laughs> it's a ghost. Wait. Something amazing just passed by. S senpai did some strange person pass by just now? Ugh. If you saw it too, that means it wasn't just my imagination. We timidly look into the living room. The, sh the person that shambled over to the table glowers as she pours herself some tea and turns on the TV. I'm surprised. Tosuka Senpai isn't a morning person. Wait, Sakura. Doesn't someone who's not a morning person, um, look cuter? 
Where'd you get that impression? Breakfast starts. Sakura and I sit next to each other while Tosuka and Ilya sit across from us. I can't. That's gotta be awkward. Oh wow, this has some refined taste, Sakura. I guess this deserves to be eaten. I don't know if Ilya is attacking or praising Sakura. Jeez, I usually don't eat in the morning. That's not good. Tosca complains as she eats the omelet. Well, she gets an omelet and we have fried chicken, fish, and pumpkin. <laughs> or, was it fried? Yeah, it was fried chicken. Yeah. Hmm. Then, for some reason, she silently starts concentrating on... Then, for some reason, she silently starts concentrating on eating. Breakfast continues quietly. And the Tsukihime music plays again. The only loud thing is the TV Tosca turned on, offering many topics of information. Hmm? A familiar scene is on TV. I can't be mistaken. The TV is showing a baffling story about a park in Shinto. A missing person in Central Park? A lot of blood around the area? It's a pretty vivid incident. An old man was jogging in the park, found a trace of blood, and reported it to the police. A policeman came to the scene and found what appeared to be one person's worth of blood and pieces of the apparent victims. Jesus Christ. But it seems the pieces are just scraps of flesh, and that they don't even weigh 50 kilograms when gathered together. The police are trying to figure out the four victims' identities. Wait, why four people? There was only enough blood for one, right? That's probably because the scattered flesh came from four people. I'm sure there were only leftovers, but that must have been enough to figure it out. Tosaka. By leftovers, do you mean this is a servant Zokin's doing? Who knows? I can't tell if Zokin had a hand in this, but I'm sure that shadow did this. See the corner of the screen? The grass has turned black. It's exactly like when the shadow appeared in the forest. Tosca states simply, but I'm not convinced for two reasons. Why? No matter what the shadow may be, it hasn't done anything like this before. It has sucked up magical energy from people, but it never, um, uh, directly killed people like this. You're right. The only reason I can think of is that there aren't any enemies right now. There aren't any masters now that can just defeat them straight on. So that means they can do whatever they want without worrying about whose attention they might get, right? That's true. We defeated the most powerful servant, or, you know, at least the one to worry about the most berserker. There really isn't any left. Does that mean they're being indiscriminate? I don't know. I'm the one that said it, but it doesn't seem like it. Even if Zokin and that shadow are related, I'm sure this was an unforeseen accident. I'll bet my omelet the Zokin is surprised to hear this news as well. Tosca's omelet is gone as she speaks. Well, I'll bet the non-existent omelet. Her hawk-like eyes are looking at the only untouched omelet on the table. Mine. Hmm. Why do you think it's an unforeseen accident? It's not cleaned up. With the blood aside, Zokin's not someone that would leave pieces of the dead body behind. In other words, Zokin was not at the scene, and that shadow was the only thing that ate there. Should we really be talking about this while we're eating? I see. Then one more thing. How did they know there were four victims? There was only one person's worth of blood, and there was only one person's worth of flesh. It's the shape, not the weight. I'm sure there was four of something people only have one of. That way, you know how many victims there are without any identification. See, if there were four left hands in a pool of blood, anyone would know how many victims there were. Durska states simply, I imagine the scene and my appetite quickly goes away. See, I told you. That's why we don't talk about this while eating. After breakfast. Shiro, we have to do some things, so come with me. Is this day just going to be a, like, slice of life thing? Is if We're not going to be fighting at all, we're just going to be doing slice of life stuff. Tosca takes me to the dojo. I had no reason to refuse and I also wanted to talk to Tosca, so it was a timely offer. It was, but... Hey, I only wanted Shiro. Why are you all following him? Tosca is unhappy at the unexpected guests. Of course, I'm the main character, so I have an entourage of women. Um, you're menacing, so I thought it's dangerous for, so I thought it's dangerous for Senpai to be by himself. Hey now, I made a pact with Shiro, so I won't attack him. You know that, so why did you follow us, Sakura? But because it's my role to protect Senpai. You declare, huh? Then how about you? You should know what I'm going to do. Did you come to, did you come to heckle me? She probably did. No, I'm here for the same reason as Sakura. I know what you want to do, but I don't know how you're going to do it. I came to make sure you don't do anything strange to Shiro. 
Oh well, I'm going to tamper with his body for his own good, so don't jump to conclusions and interfere, okay? We have to, uh, connect our bodies together. We don't have time to be taking things slow. She must have prepared it before breakfast, as Tosca's bag is at the dojo. It's full of equipment like what I saw at her house, and it's easy to guess what'll happen, but... Sorry, can I say something beforehand? What? Don't tell me now you don't want anything that hurts. Of course, nobody wants anything that hurts. Anyway, any normal person would run away after seeing these things with no explanation. The other two nod. I have two reliable supporters this time. Are we gonna break more lamps? Is that what's gonna happen? I'm sorry I'm not explaining things to you. I know I'm not normal compared to you. You can go somewhere else if you have any complaints. Oh. Tosca's sulking, unhappy about the three-on-one situation. No, I'm not complaining. I have a big idea of what you might be doing. That's why I'm putting every trust in you. I'll trust you no matter what you tell me to do. I promised you last night, right? Huh. huh. Then why did you stop me? If you don't have any questions, then sit and be quiet. No, this isn't about that. I want to make sure what our future course of action is. We have to decide now what we should be doing. Breaking lamps. <laughs> Obviously breaking lamps. Everyone's expression changes. What I just mentioned is a problem we all postponed last night. What we will fight against and what we'll do. We can't back out after we make our decision. No, we already can't back out, so this is just a statement of our resolve. I'm not going to take part in battles. I'll fight if someone attacks me, but I don't intend to start a fight myself. I don't know what'll happen even if I win this Holy Grail War. I feel the same way, Ilya-san. I don't think I can beat Grandfather. The match is pretty much decided, so I don't think Grandfather will come attack us if we stay quiet here. And silence from Tosca. Tosca doesn't say anything. I don't know what she's thinking, but I want to believe that she has the same opinion as me, since she's not agreeing with Ilya or Sakura. You're right. I agree with concentrating purely on defense. Sakura stays here to defend against Zoken. Ryder is with Sakura, so she should be able to defend Sakura and Ilya if she concentrates on defense. Tosuka and I will try to come up with a way to defeat Zoken. We'll be attacked eventually even if we stay here, and we can't leave them be. We don't know if something like this morning's news is going to happen again. Tosuka doesn't interrupt. It means she intended for the two of us to fight Zoken, no matter what her true opinion may be. I can't just ignore Zoken, but I can't ignore the Shadow either. Tosuka and I will start patrolling the town tonight, so Sakura and Ilya are to stay here and keep watch. I confirm the plan with everyone, then. What? what are you saying, senpai? Sakura? What? It's nothing ridiculous, right? Tosuka and I are the ones that can fight, so we have to beat Zoken. That's the ridiculous part! You can't use one of your arms anymore! Do you really know what that means? Uh, Sakura... I don't get it. You're acting strange. Why are you going to fight even after what's happened to you? You should know that things are out of your hands now because you actually took part in it. So why are you saying such a ridiculous thing? I was relieved because I thought you wouldn't fight with one arm. So why... Sakura... Sakura's trembling. She's hanging her head as she trembles at her words. I don't know why she's trembling. The only thing I can do to answer her question. Sakura, I'm going to let you win. That's why I'm fighting. Yes, I don't want to ignore Zoken and the Shadow, but more than that, I want the Holy Grail. Nobody's making me do this. This is a selfish wish of mine. That's right. It's a selfish wish I had ever since I decided to be Sakura's ally and not everyone else's. Is that for my sake? Yes, it will be for your sake if we can remove the crest worm from your body. It's alright, Sakura. If there's no chance of victory, we'll make a chance. And we won't fight while we don't have a chance of victory. There's still danger even if we have a chance, but there's always a risk, so I can't promise you I won't get hurt. But I'll definitely come back. I told you I'd protect you, right? So I can't fulfill my promise unless I'm by your side. Senpai. Sakura looks down painfully. It looks like she's apologizing. Alright, can you stop it there? Our course of action's already determined, so there's no good- So it does no good to whine. Yeah, you're one to say that. Sakura and Ilya are to stay here. Shiro and I will patrol the town at night. We won't carelessly attack Zoken even if we find him. We'll chip away at their force only when we have a chance of victory. That's our future course of action, right, Shiro? Yeah, it'd be great if that's your decision. Huh, I don't even need to tell you. 
Aunt Sakura, Kirai couldn't completely extract your crestworm, but he suppressed its action, so it can't run wild unless they use a drug on you like Shinji did. But at the same time, Zoken can't be the winner as long as you stay here at this house. He's going to come take you sooner or later, so refusing to fight is not an option. How can you say you won't do anything knowing that? That, that may be true, but Grandfather shouldn't do anything rough if we don't do anything. Are you fucking crazy? Do you know what kind of person this guy is? He will he won't stop to do you know, he won't really stop at anything to try to get you back. Sakura, stop being so submissive. Zoken isn't your grandfather or your master. Do you still think he's human after all the terrible things he's done to you? No, I've never thought he was human. And if you've seen Fate Zero, you'd know he's actually not human. Or if you've just been watching these videos, you can probably assume he's not really human. Especially considering he's lived for so long. Well, actually, no, that, that I forgot. That already did kind of spoil the fact that he isn't human. Then prepare yourself. Shiro and I will be fighting outside, so you have to fight here too. If Zoken attacks this place, you have to get away at any cost. The Holy Grail cannot be completed as long as Ryder isn't defeated. You have a hope of being saved as long as Ryder's alive. Is it the dignity of the older sister? Sakura nods and replies that she understands. Time to get our ass kicked. And after that, I ask why she brought me here to the dojo. Let's see, why don't you get naked to start with? What? No matter what we end up doing, nothing would get nothing would go right unless I take a look at what kind of a body you have. <laughs> what what kind of joke is that? And she gives me a ridiculous reply. What? 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 I continue in a small voice because she's more surprised than I am. <laughs> what? Is that such a shock, Sakura? It, it is! You want Senpai to be naked? What are you thinking, Tosuka Senpai? I'm thinking about Shiro, of course. You're in danger, but Shiro's also in a lot of danger. You should know, too, that we have to get a lot of things done now. What does that have anything to do with him taking his clothes off? That's true, but... If you know, then don't butt in. Hey there, don't just stand there and take off your top. I'm going to put on a warning sign, so I can't do it if you keep your shirt on. Tosuka glares at me. Ugh. But Sakura's stare is painful. It's uneasily asking me if I'm going to go along with Tosuka. Hurry up, we won't make it before tonight's patrol unless we give your body some time to familiarize itself with it. Uh, this is no time to be embarrassed about something like this. I don't want to take off my clothes, but taking off my top is like getting changed, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Man, alright Tosuka, so what do I do now? Come here, I'll use a small part of my magic crest on you. Uh, over there? You mean like this? Of course, I have to touch your body with my left hand, comprehend it, and inscribe my warning crest on you. It'll tickle and hurt, but bear with me. Tosuka wiggles her fingers. Ugh. I can't run away after coming this far. I give up and go near Tosuka. <laughs> um, Sakura's stare is more painful now. <laughs> I'm going to start now, but let me confirm beforehand. I said before that I'll put a switch in you, but I won't do that. In your state, it's too dangerous to be able to turn your magic circuit on and off so easily. Uh, okay, I got it. It's natural that I'm acting strange and can't breathe. I'm naked from the waist up and Tosuka is near me. It'd be more strange not to be nervous. Hey, you don't seem to be calm. Are you listening to me? I'm listening. I'm listening to you. Alright then. So this operation is to suppress magical energy. Your body is unstable right now, and we don't know when Archer's arm might flow magical energy into your body. I'm going to put needles into your left shoulder, belly button, and your throat, so your left arm won't be connected to you unless you really want it to be. That sounds painful. Is this like acupuncture? This is also a countermeasure against the shadow. The th that thing sucks up magical energy just by being there. The sign I'm going to carve into you will also have resistance to magical energy, so you should be less burdened when facing that thing. Then, Tosca places her hand on my chest. Whoa! I barely stop myself from jumping back. Oh, was it hot? Can you bear it? I'm going to transplant the magic crest from my arm, so I can't lower the temperature. No, I don't care about it being hot or cold. Tosca's hand is soft, and her touch sends a shudder through my heart. Every time her slender fingers run across my chest, my, my temperature rises by a degree. Alright, I think I have a grasp of your chest. 
Next is your belly button. That, what the fuck? But this is going to hurt. I'm going to put my finger in, so try not to move. What, she's going to put her finger into your belly button? What the fuck? Don't worry, it won't injure you and I won't move it around much. Hey, what do you mean by move it? Josica! My body convulses. <laughs> Look at Sakura. <laughs> my stomach. Having Tosca's hand in my stomach is bad enough, but something rigid tears through my skin and into my body. Ugh. <laughs> Hold on, that's b I, I said it's going to hurt. Don't make noises like that. It's distracting. It makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. Are you stupid? My face is going to get redder if you say something like that, you idiot. <laughs> Huh. I'm done with the belly button. All that's left is your shoulder and throat, so stay calm and don't run away. I would really love to run away right now. I would love to, but, but doing so would seem like I'm conscious of Tosca and I won't be able to excuse myself. Come on, I'm going to do the same thing to your shoulder, so suck it up. Grit your teeth and don't make any weird noises. Okay, I'll try my best. Don't be such a putty. It's embarrassing, so I look away from Tosca. Don't look at Sakura, she just looks disappointed. It's not just my face that's blushing, I think my entire body's turning red. I'm blushing even though I know this is only for magic, so I bet Tosca's having a hard time too. Man, how can I ever face Tosca again after committing such a disgrace? Alright, that's it. I'm going to put away the equipment, so you go cool yourself off. Tosca grabs something that looks like a first aid kit and goes to the corner of the dojo where her bag is. My face is still red, but I'm finally able to calm down and take a deep breath. Uh, then. Sakura twiddles her fingers, looking like she wants to say something. Sakura, Sakura w what's wrong? Everything. Um, well... She takes a look at me. Then, she takes a deep breath as if preparing herself. Uh, uh senpai, we, we, uh, what the fuck? Why are you gonna say that right here? Oh my god. We, uh, made love, right? And she asks me a ridiculous question. Everyone can hear you! Fucking Christ! Some- uh, Am I gonna have to smack a bitch? Like, my- <laughs> My face, which is com which had finally calmed down, passes its boiling point and turns red again. Uh, um, I feel dizzy. Just recalling what happened that night is so stimulating that it makes me forget our current situation. So for Sakura to ask me for confirmation like this, when I'm already off balance from Tosca, is like getting hit twice as hard. Um, Senpai? No, this isn't the time to be speechless. Yeah, I did make love to you. Is that, Please tell me everyone's out of the room. Please. R right? Then it's strange for you to lose your composure against Nason. I finally realized why her stare was so painful earlier. It's because she was sulking. Yeah. Jealousy. I, I'm sorry, but Sakura, this had nothing to do with Tosuka, and, um, it couldn't be helped. She was kind of violating our personal space. I know, but please bear with it. You're- you're my lover. God, that felt so awkward, the voice. <laughs> I know that, but I couldn't fight against it. I'm a guy, and I've admired Tosuka since I got into this school, so I couldn't help it. I'm sorry, I'll try to bear it next time, so I'll do my best not to lose my composure. Really? I'll get mad if this happens again next time. God, she goes from being like really... I don't know, she kind of changes her personality like on the fly. It's like she gets really controlling. And she's like, you better not do that again. Repentant from the bottom of my heart, I tell her I'll do my best. Man, I only realized it just now, but... Having three girls under the same roof might be a really stressful thing. You just realized that. I just realized that having a harem of women living living in the same house as me might not be a good idea. It's 11.30 now. With lunch coming up, the kitchen is filled with a noisy, forbidding atmosphere. Um, Tosca senpai I'm thinking of making a dish that everyone can eat from. Do you have anything you don't like? In the kitchen, with the refrigerator at her back, Sakura speaks timidly. In response. Oh, she's wearing an apron. GCV. Hey, there's a fucking cat character on it. <laughs> I see. Then I'll make Bapo Tofu. No! No, don't make that. No. <laughs> Ikure always loves that. He always loves eating a Bapo Tofu. Tosuka cuts her off and selfishly starts cutting the tofu. Do you want some? They aren't getting a line. What were you thinking letting them cook? 
Ilya sits Japanese style on the cushion and speaks without reserve. Hmm, it seems even Ilya can tell Atoska and Sakura are tense. It's just going to get worse if you leave them be. You should know that. So how did you let it come to this? It just sort of happened. We were wondering about lunch. Tosuka said she'd make it, and Sakura said it was her job. Neither one of them would back down, so I took both their ideas and suggested that they make lunch together. Have some sister bonding. You said that? I see. No wonder they can't back out now. Ilya seems to understand and takes a sip of tea with proper manners. She shouldn't know the proper etiquette, but she's elegant even with something as simple as this. But Shiro, couldn't you have made lunch? Why did you get Rin and Sakura to do it? I already made breakfast. Why should I have to make lunch too? Tosuka and Mato are enemies and Rin wants to kill Sakura. That was only up to yesterday. Tosuka is working with us because she doesn't want to fight Sakura. And they aren't enemies. They get along and, and I entrusted them with lunch because I thought it would go well. Shiro, you are as naive as ever. Huh? They get along? Is that so surprising? Yili and I are friends even though we were enemies, right? So it should be the same for Tosuka and Sakura. Uh, well, Shiro and I are special. Being special has nothing to do with this. You'll understand if you watch. Tosuka is being more blunt than usual, but she warns Sakura every time she does something wrong. It means that... <laughs> She's concerned about her, but, but she's putting on a cold face and ignoring her because she doesn't want her to find out. Right, and Sakura knows that, so she's making mistakes she normally doesn't. She's concerned about Tosuka, too. Now that you pointed it out, I can see it. Then what, they want to get along, but they're too embarrassed to start talking? I nod. I don't know about Tosuka, but I know how Sakura feels. Sakura likes Tosuka, and she wants Tosuka to like her. Or she would never call her Nason. I see, so Rin is clumsy in spite of her appearance. Impressed, Ilya murmurs and looks in the kitchen. I follow her example and look in the kitchen. They must be half done with the cooking. Standing side by side in the small kitchen, Tosuka and Sakura are making their dishes. One holds the frying pan while the other holds the ladle, but neither, say, but neither says anything. And after a silence, it even gets us nervous. Hey Sakura, uh, Tosuka senpai. As expected from sisters, they start talking at the same time. And they do it again? Oh. What? Go ahead, I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Oh, um, it's really nothing. Didn't you want to say something? It's nothing. Well, different people cook differently, right? So I thought it might be useful if you can teach me some of your flavorings. Tosuka, you're going to burn everything. You're right, I'd love it if you could teach me your recipes, Tosuka senpai Hmm. That's it? I don't believe this. At any rate, they'll be like that forever. It's scary that I can't deny the possibility. Tosuka is normally dominant, but why is she so shy when it comes to Sakura? And Sakura too. She calls Tosuka Nesan when she's with me, but she's reserved when she's actually with her. Sakura. Huh? Oh, yes. What is it, senpai? I need to talk with you. Can you come here? Stop being so awkward. Senpai, is there something outside? No, being outside isn't the important part. I just wanted to talk secretly. Um, talk secretly? Um, is this something you can't let Nace on me? That's it. That is exactly what I want to talk about. I'm talking about how you address Tosuka. You don't call her Nace on when you're with her. It's obvious that you really want to call her that. Uh, you mean it's obvious to Nace on? Whoa. I just made that up, but it seems that Sakura is more reserved about her sister's feelings than I thought. N no, Tosuka doesn't know. I don't know why, but she's really dense when it comes to you. But, th but in the worst case, she might think that you hate her. Th that's not true. It's natural for Nesan to hate me, but I'm happy to be with her. I never even dreamed that we could make lunch together. Right, then why don't you just be honest with her? Even someone as dense as Tosuka can't possibly miss it if you tell her straight out. Then you should be able to... Sakura should be able to realize by herself that Tosuka wants to get along with Sakura. Um, Senpai. It's nothing. Just call Tosuka Nesa. I'll bet you she changes so much that it's funny. Would it really turn out like that? I think having someone like me calling her Nesan would only bother her. I'm a Magus of Mato. I can't do everything like Nesan can. Tosuka Senpai is probably disappointed that a failure like me is her sister. 
You idiot! Don't bring other things into a sister's relationship. You like Tosca and she's your big sister, right? Then there's nothing more important than that. I'll guarantee it. There's mutual love between you two. To be honest, there's so much love that I'm a bit jealous. Is that so? Yeah, so call her Nason. I think Tosca believed in it, just like you did, so there's nothing to be scared of. It's for her sake, so please call her Nason. For Nason's sake? I don't know what's going on in her mind, but after putting her hands together as if praying and thinking it over. Okay, I'll do my best. Oh no. This is gonna get weird. We return to the living room. Sakura exchanges a glance with me, takes a deep breath, and heads to the kitchen. Welcome back. Sakura's tensed up. What happened? Hmm? The rest depends on her courage. Well, I'm sure it's going to go well. I sit down on the cushion. Here we go. Nesan, can I finish this fried chicken? Yes, all that's left is to fry it, so I'll leave it to you. Wait, Sakura, did you just... Okay, if I'm doing the chicken, can you cut the lettuce, Nesan? I'll leave the serving to you. Okay, that's fine, but... Everything goes still. They both fall silent, and the tension is much greater than before. Not even breathing, they stare at one another. Um, is it strange, Nason? Uh, that's not it. I was just surprised because it, I've never been called that way. Then, um... I have nothing against it. You're free to call me whatever you want, and I'm calling you by name. Well, it could get confusing because there are two senpai here, so that should make things clearer. Tosca makes it sound like it can't be helped and looks away. But Sakura should be able to tell that she's blushing and can't hide her smile. Their joint work got even more awkward after that. They messed up so many times that lunch turned out to be a disaster. The fried chicken was covered in pepper, the mapo tofu was hot as hell, and the rice cooker was never turned on, so we ended up eating without rice. But Tosca and Sakura both looked happy, smiling at every opportunity. Well, it's mapo tofu, so obviously it's gonna be hot. Jeez, they sure are clumsy. Ilya sounds dumbfounded as she eats mapo tofu that's hot enough to numb your tongue. I nod back and gratefully eat the food they made. Your cooking sucks! I return to my room and rest after lunch. Tosca had something to do, so she went to her room with Ilya. I'm going to take measures against Zokin with Ilya's help. It should take some time for the crest to familiarize itself with your body, so you can rest for the whole afternoon. You'll just get in our way, even if you're here. Well, thanks for that. That's how it is, according to her. We have no way to oppose Zokin right now. So all I can do is wait for whatever Tosca's preparing. Sakura has returned to her room. Sakura was feeling dizzy while we were cleaning up after lunch. I wasn't worried because she seemed well this morning, but Sakura is no different from a sick person. Tosuka and I told her to rest if she's feeling even a bit tired, so Sakura is back in her room now. I check out how my arm's doing. It didn't move at all before, but I can manage to move my elbow now. Well, it's not your elbow. It's still numb, but I feel no pain. If I'm to talk about pain, the crest Tosuka planted hurts more. My shoulder, throat, and belly button. It feels like bolter in those areas as if I'm Frankenstein. My left arm is borrowed, and my body is held together with bolts, huh? It reminds me of cyborgs one would see in science fiction movies. It's an interesting idea, but I can't laugh it off. I was going to check how my arm's doing, but I didn't even stand in front of the mirror. It's almost two o'clock. Well... Ah, oh, fuck. I doubt any of this will lead us to a dead end, so... Not sure. Go check out how Tosca and Ilya are doing. I haven't seen Ryder. I'll go check up on Sakura. I'm pretty sure checking up on Sakura would get us affection points. So maybe that's what we want to do. Okay, so apparently... I, I'll be honest, I did look up a guide because... I remember last time we didn't go to visit Ilya, we got a dead end. So I feel like ignoring any of these characters is going to lead us to one of those. Uh, so I guess we are going to visit Ryder. The guide says we need to look up, and the guide says that we need to check up on Ryder for some reason. I I guess because Ryder is important, but I don't know. I was going to pick uh, checking up on Sakura. Honestly, I'll be honest. I don't think it matters. Um, maybe I shouldn't have looked at the guide for that, but I'm I don't know. Maybe I'm just being paranoid. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Ryder all day. Considering her, I'm sure she's keeping watch on Sakura from a distance, but I have to greet her if she's around. I 
I mean, I, I guess she's like in cloaking mode right now or something. Like she's just hiding herself. Ryder's nowhere in the house. Kind of like what Archer did. There's her room, but it didn't even look like it had been used. Then a place where she may like and where Sakura's room is in view. The shed. This is the only place I can think of. The shed is the only spot that has a good view of Sakura's room. It's concealed and is unoccupied. Ryder, you Are you here, Ryder? I call out to the empty shed. Yep, sure enough. I am standing by. Do you need something, Shiro? Ryder must have been in spirit form as she suddenly appears. Well, I came out to greet her, but I get tense when I actually stand face to face with her. I don't care about Ryder's personality to keep everyone distant from her, but as a guy, her overexposing outfit is troublesome. I asked you if you had any business. Oh, no, I really don't have any, but I haven't greeted you today, so I just wanted to say good morning. I see. You must have a lot of free time. Her response is direct, but this is within my expectations. This is actually easier for me to handle because this is what I expect from Ryder. Yeah, I'm bored. I have some free time, so I'm just walking around. Are you guarding Sakura from here? Yes, I am Sakura's servant. I will not protect you or Tosuka Rin unless she gives me an order to do so. Really? I'm glad to hear you say that. I sigh with relief. <sighs> I was worried, but it seems Sakura isn't pushing herself. Thank you, Ryder. Please give Sakura your best regards in the future as well. I wave and head for the yard. Please wait. I have a question. I stop in front of the door. What? There aren't many things I can answer. No, this is about you, so you should be able to answer. Emiya Shiro, I do not understand your previous statements. I refuse to be your guard. How can you call that a good thing? Huh? Oh, that's your question? I'm sure I'd sleep better with knowing you were guarding me, but I'm a guy, and guys are supposed to protect themselves. Tosuka is, well, I'm sure she would deal with anything that came her way. You were going to protect yourself with that body of yours? It only sounds like a bluff to me. It is. We're the weaker ones, so we'll lose unless we bluff. Well, to be honest, I can't help but feel uneasy, but I still want you to keep this stance. It will tire Sakura if you move around. I don't want Sakura to use any more magical energy. I see. Moving about will certainly burden her. I burden her just by taking form. So you do not want me to take on excess work? Right, I just want you to protect Sakura. And if I ever get killed, can you protect Ilya as well? How convenient of you. You know I am a burden, but you want to rely on me in the worst case. Yes, yeah. is that asking too much? Ryder doesn't answer. Her blindfold eyes stare directly at me. Um, why not make a deal? I'll definitely help you if you're in danger. It's give and take, so can you take Ilya into account as well? I cannot respond to that. There is a high probability that you would already be dead if I were in danger. Your proposal is not attractive. Yes, you're right. It's meaningless if I'm dead before you're in danger. Oh, I'm sorry. I was really being convenient. But I'm troubled now. That means it's better to take Ilya to a safer place. She doesn't want to go to the church, but leaving her alone in her castle is even more... Jeez, you really are unreliable. Huh? Did you say something, Ryder? Yes, I said I will consider your proposal. If you save me when I am in danger, I shall definitely do as you wish. Is that alright, Shiro? Uh, oh, really? I was being really convenient, you know. This is reasonable. It is only if you save me first. I'm stunned. Um, I'm glad that Ryder accepted my proposal, but more than that... I forgot, Ryder is kind of a part of this harem too, isn't she? Ryder, did you just smile? No, there was nothing to be happy about, so there's no reason to smile. Ah, bullshit. But you were smiling. Even if there wasn't a reason, it was really subtle, so I almost didn't catch it. That is not possible. You are mistaken as I am denying the fact. Ryder declares. Hmm. Now that she mentions it, maybe she's right. Oh, she did she use her mystic eyes on us to try to like convince us that we didn't see that or something? Hmm. The air is getting strangely tense now. I was going to go back to the main building, but I'm concerned about Ryder. She's still she's silent and cold like always, but it seems like she has something she wants to say. <laughs> the air gets tense as if we're facing off. But I know this is abrupt, but Ryder is tall. Long hair, slender limbs. I've only seen it once, but her face under the mask was beautiful. Tosuka and Sakura are beautiful too, but Ryder has an entirely different sort of beauty. Do you have a question, Shiro? Huh? Oh, it's not much of a question, but can I ask it? I do not mind. What is it? Okay, you're tall, Ryder. Exactly how tall are you? I ask her straight out. Wait, why is she backing up? Ryder? No, 
It is nothing. Please do not mind me. Alright, so how tall are you? You're taller than me, so you must be over 170. I will not answer that question. Please ask me something different. Well, she's still a woman, Jiro. She's embarrassed. You won't answer? You don't know how tall you are? N no, that is not the case. Regardless, please ask me something different. I'll be angry if you persist in this. Man, she's actually getting, getting embarrassed. Hmm. Ryder is obviously disturbed. The usually cool Ryder is flustered, so it could mean that... Ryder, are you self-conscious about your height? Uh-oh. You did not... You should not have said that. Ryder freezes. It seems I guessed right. We both shut our mouths. She must not be able to bear the silence. I, is it strange for me to wor be worried about such a thing? Uh, no. I was just wondering why, and not because I found it strange. Why does it bother you? Is it not obvious? A tall woman like me is unsightly, unattractive. Why? It's good looking. Actually, she's going. She's asking too much. I want her height, really. And silence again. It finally occurs to me that it could be distracting her from her guard duty. Um, am I bothering you, Ryder? Yes, I'm hiding in preparation for Mato Zuken's surprise attack. However, it will do little good if you are talking to me like this. Right, then I'll be going back now. I'm sorry I bothered you. Oh, hold on, Shiro. Yeah, I don't, I'm pretty sure I didn't do this in my initial playthrough of this route, too. Like, I, I don't think I talked to Ryder. I, so I don't, I really don't think it matters what you do in this, uh, on this day, because it seems like more of just laid-back sort of slice-of-life day. She stops me, and I turn around for a second. Ryder bites her lip in annoyance, then. If you have free time, please go nurse Sakura. It really matters to Sakura if you are there with her or not. Oh, you're right. I'll go I'll go right away. Sakura pushes herself when I'm not watching. I'll go see if she's really resting or not. Ryder's right. Sakura's room is near here, so I'll take care of her this afternoon. Oh, that's right. I remember why I came here. I turn to Ryder for the third time. What, what is it, Shiro? Good morning, Ryder. I haven't greeted you yet, right? Good, good. Good, good. It'd just be stupid if I forgot to greet her when this is the whole reason I came here. Then... Good morning, Shiro. Then I shall also say something I held back. Ryder regains her composure and looks down at me coldly. What? You waste effort on useless matters. It's too late for a morning greeting. It is already afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. I honestly forgot about you until just now. I thought as much. Please take better care in the future. And please forget what I said earlier. What do you mean? How you must think I'm a nuisance. I misunderstood you, so I take it back. I don't think you're a nuisance. I understand that. I would expect no less from a person who comes out to greet me. I'm not mistaken. She's really smiling. She's gonna pull another Jedi mind trick on us. You did not just see that, Shiro. You there, Sakura? I knock quietly. Oh, Senpai. I hear a sluggish voice. Oh, please hold on. I'll get changed right away. She must have been sleeping, and now she's scrambling to meet me. After two minutes. Sorry to keep you waiting. Please come in. Oh, well, we end up talking to Sakura anyway, so it doesn't seem to matter if we choose that or not. Oh, okay. Excuse me. I suddenly get nervous that I'm about to enter a girl's room. I've been here before, but the situation is different. Sakura wasn't conscious back then, so but now she's opening the door and inviting me in. Yeah, this was Tosuka's room uh, in the Unlimited Blade Works route, so I'm kind of wondering where she's staying. She must be staying in... Well, obviously, she's in another room, but... Yeah, she was in this room in the Fate and the Unlimited Blade Works are out, but now Sakura takes this room. So, is anything wrong, Senpai? I was sleeping, so I don't know if anything went on. Oh, it's nothing like that. I didn't come here because something happened. I just came because I was worried that you weren't resting properly, but... It seems I woke her up as a result. <laughs> then I passed. I was resting like you told me to. Yeah, I'm sorry for waking you up. You should know your own body. You wouldn't push yourself and move around if you're sick. It seems I was carrying excessively. I contemplate my actions, but Sakura starts laughing. <laughs> uh, am I worrying too much? No, that's not true. You're pretty sharp. To be honest, I wanted to continue cleaning. I was thinking about sneaking out if you didn't come. Oh, sneak out? Yes, I didn't want to rest when I feel fine because it makes me feel like I'm sick. So I wanted to act normal in spite of what you told me. 
But Nesan got mad and told me not to be foolish. She said it's a bother to you two if I push myself and collapse. Hmm. That's right. We stopped Sakura from doing the laundry after lunch. She wouldn't listen to me, but when I was wondering how to convince her, Tosuka came to help. But it wasn't anything nice. If you collapse, we'll have to kill you. As her harsh words would indicate. Yeah, Tosuka was mad. Yes, Nesan scolded me. Sakura sounds happy. I see. She knows that Tosuka cares about her, no matter what she said. Then you have to rest. No matter what you may think, your body's tired. Tosuka and I can go outside without worries if you're resting like this. You're right, but I'm really healthy. I'm just not feeling well right now, and I'll be back to normal tomorrow. This is just like that cold, and I'll get over it in a day. You idiot. I know I'm not one to talk after I woke you up, but you should rest. Sleep if you can. I'll come wake you up for dinner, so you should relax until then. I get up and leave. But... Oh. Sakura grabs my shirt. Sakura. Um, I'm going to sleep like you told me to, but... Um, it'll make me happy if you're by my side. Oh god, no. Please don't tell me. Sakura rarely demands something. She must not want to burden others, as so she tries to do most things by herself. But Sakura is asking something from me right now. Well, this is nothing, but it might be the most selfish thing she can think of. That's why she looks so uneasy. I'll do any favor she asks of me, but she only asks trivial things like this. Okay, then I'll stay here a bit longer. I suppress my urge to embrace Sakura and manage to tell her. Alright, then I'm going to brew some tea. I'll treat you to the best Chinese tea. Sakura heads to the door in a hurry. Hold on, I'll brew the tea, so you stay in bed. You're putting the cart before the horse. Oh, you're right. I'm acting strange. Sakura hurries back to her bed. I pat her head as I pass by and go to brew us some tea. The daily life of Imiashiro. But, the situation is more nerve-wracking than I thought. I'm alone with Sakura. She's right before my eyes and I, and I can see her bare neck and her captivating breasts. That alone, uh, reminds me of what happened that night and I don't know where to look. But to be honest, I knew you liked Nesan because you're always so happy in front of her. So everything Sakura says goes over my head. I'll lose control if I look at her too closely. I'm a man, you know. Recalling what happened that night makes me want to push her down and get a taste of her body again. Wow. Isn't it? I'm not attractive like Nesan, and you seem to like Hilyasan too. Ew! Um, do you not like girls with big breasts? Um, what the fuck kind of question is that? I take a deep breath and calm myself down. I can't push her down when she's not feeling well. Well, wait, having sex with her will help her. What? 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 I mean, it probably would, but what? What? God damn it, what the fuck is he thinking? Then it's not bad. It's not bad, but... That's right, Tosca's next door, first of all. Oh, she is? Oh, okay. They'll notice right away if I do such a thing. I'm sure they'll look down on me for doing it so early in the day. I think they look down on you in general for doing it. They'd both be pretty jealous. Wait, Sakura, um, did I do something to make you angry? Realizing that Sakura is unhappy, I come back to the real world. No, you haven't done anything. That's the problem. Eyes up here, mister. Um, I said something very suggestive. You weren't listening, though. Uh, I'm sorry, I was spaced out. Um, I think you were talking about Tosuka? You know, Sakura, I don't think... I think if he didn't like girls with big breasts, he wouldn't be focusing on your breasts. You know, that... Just pointing that out. Yes, I was asking if you're happy now that Nesan's staying here. Uh, oh, that's right. I was asking Sakura about our situation. So, how is it? You like Tosuka, right? So doesn't this make you happy? Yes, it's delightful, but I'm also feeling uneasy. Nesan is my ideal, and she has many things I could not obtain. That's why I want to look away when she's near me, and I can't be honestly delighted. It feels like I'm being condemned by Nesan and myself for what I'm doing. I can understand Sakura's point. It's painful to have your ideal in front of you because it makes you feel inferior. Well, I do understand, but... Sakura, your ideal is someone like Tosuka? I ask timidly. Tosuka might punch me if she was here. <laughs> Probably. Yes, I've always wanted to be like Nesan. Oh, it's not as a Magus, but as a girl. 
Nason can do anything, and she's always dignified. I want to be as cool as her. Sakura sounds happy. Hmm. I hate to admit it, but Tosuka certainly is cool. She's really manly in the sense that she takes responsibility for what she says. I see, but you couldn't see Tosuka until now, right? Something about the agreement between the two families. So how do you know about her? You can't help but wonder. Nason and I don't remember about when we were small. It was so long ago, but we both knew that we were sisters. That's why we were more interested, and we watched each other from afar. We never sat down and talked, but I heard a lot of rumors about Tosuka Senpai, who was a year ahead of me. Oh, you must mean the rumors that she's a perfect honor student. Now that you mention it, you never run out of things to talk about her since she's famous. Yes, and it's not like I'd never met her. She would often greet me at school and come watch the archery club. And I would always think at those times that I'm, con that I'm content that she's watching me. I'm happy that she's worried about me, and I knew that she would hate me if I asked for more. Why would she hate you? My magic is not like Nason's. There's no set limitation on how you use your magic. Senpai's magic is to accomplish something and to create a phenomenon. There is no restricted goal set from the start. Hmm. You're right. Strengthening is one of the only things I can do, but you can use a strengthened object to do all sorts of things. But the Mato magic is different. Mato's magic is limited to stealing away from others. There is no other use for it. It only feeds on other people's pain, and there is no teaching you to return their happiness. I can't just nod in response to that. I don't know what kind of magic she was taught at the Mato household. The magic she was taught is a heresy, and Sakura is ashamed of it. The problem between Sakura and Tosuka is the difference in their family's magic. The more Sakura hates the magic of Mato, the more self-loathing she feels. So you hate the magic of Mato? Senpai. That's like asking someone if she hates breathing. Then, Sakura looks up and starts talking like Tosuka. I don't like it or hate it. I just couldn't live without it. I was adopted by the Mato family for that reason alone. If I hadn't been able to succeed them, I would have died. Oh, please don't make a face like that. The teaching was certainly strict, but it wasn't as tough as you may think. And if you want to talk about strictness, it's not even close to your training. I'm fine with getting hurt by others, but I'm scared of hurting myself. I want to live, so I can't end it myself. I don't know, I feel like Shiro's training is preferable to being raped by worms. I don't mind other people cutting my wrist, but I'm scared to cut it myself. That is pretty weird. But you can't do either. Um, I've seen your nightly training. It, it was only once, though. I forgot something here, came back, heard something in the shed, and went to check it out. Sakura bows her head in apology. But I don't want her apologizing for something like that. No, you don't have to apologize. There's, that's carelessness on my side. I'm a failure as a magus if I can't notice the presence around me. Um, more importantly, when was that? It was... Was it right after you started coming here? I really hope so. I'm improving, even though it may be really slowly. If I didn't notice Sakura's presence recently, it means I haven't improved at all. It was last summer. It's the day Fujimura-sensei brought a watermelon. I see. That's good. I sigh with relief. <sighs> I guess I can excuse myself if it was half a year ago. So, um, Sakura, well, what did you think? She's the first person besides Kiritsugu who saw me training in magic. I practiced in front of Tosuka these past few days, but that's different from the training I do in the shed. So Sakura's opinion is like a test. Sakura is Mato's maga, so I might be able to get a good score. Um, I guess I'll use my right to remain silent. I'm not Nason, but it'd be terrible if I put a score on it. Uh, does that mean I got a failing score? <laughs> you could say it's a really bad failing score. Crap. Sakura doesn't seem similar to her sister, but she actually is. But Senpai, that's not the only time I saw it. No, I couldn't see it again because I was too scared. Too scared? Yes, not only that, but I thought many times that I should stop you. Your training isn't normal. It looked to me like you were stabbing your own throat. It's not that I imagined it, but it really did look that way. Your training was that dangerous. I understand what Sakura wants to say. Creating a magic circuit is close to death for me. My body would explode if the concentration in me is off by a few millimeters. But isn't that an ordinary compensation for Amagus? Kiritsugu was the one who taught me that death is Amagus' constant companion. Really? I hear that it's like that for all magi. Maybe it looks dangerous for me because I'm unskilled. 
You're wrong. It's not a question of skill. First of all, you're special in that you can use magic when you don't have this talent. Magic is not something you can use, but something you teach the body. No Magus creates a new magic circuit for each spell the way you do. I'm talking about the final result. Every night you did something that could kill you. Nobody forced you and you didn't get anything out of it, but you stubbornly continued. I think that's something even Nason can't do. You follow through on what you've decided until the very end, regardless of whether it's right or not. So you're probably the strongest one out of all of us. Wait. It, it's really embarrassing if you say something like that with a straight face. You, you idiot! I'm not giving you anything, not even if you flatter me. First of all, Tosuka's the strong one, and I, I don't even know what kind of Magus you are, but you're the successor of Mato, and you also have Ryder. No, you are strong, Senpai. It's not because of your magic circuit or your talent, but because of your mind. But because your mind is pure. I knew from the very first time I met you. I knew that you would never betray anyone. Uh, well, I don't know how to respond when she talks seriously like that. Thanks. I'm glad you said that, even if you're just flattering me. I'm embarrassed, but I tell her how I feel. Sakura. She smiles happily and looks straight at me. This is bad. The distracting thoughts I shook off earlier will return if she makes a face like that. Um, I guess I'll get going now. You're sleepy too, right? There's always tonight, so, so you should rest well in the afternoon. I cough intentionally. <coughs> I look to the wall, to Tosuka and Ilya on the other side. Y you're right, there's tonight too, and Asan is next door. She must understand how I feel as she blushes and starts muttering. I bet I look like that too. Then I'm going back to my room. I'll come get you when it's dinner time. Oh, please hold on, senpai. What is it? Um, I'd be really happy if you could stay here until I fall asleep. I bitterly smile at her intermittent words. Actually, it's something I want to ask her if I can. She's so timid that she probably doesn't even know how much I've fallen for her. Okay, I'll stay here if I'm not a bother. I'll go after you fall asleep. Is that fine? Uh, of course, I'll do my best to stay up. But Sakura, I'm glad you're saying that, but that defeats the whole point. Sakura suddenly falls silent when she lies down. She must have really been tired. It looks like she suddenly got sleepy when she laid down. But still. But senpai, I'll get well if I rest today. But what about your arm? She must have no intention of going to sleep as Sakura keeps talking. My arm is doing fine. It doesn't hurt as long as I keep this cloth on, and it's slowly starting to move. At this pace, I'm sure it'll move fine by tomorrow. That's good. It's been a while since Nason treated it, right? It looks like it was just first aid, so I thought the effect might have worn off. What do you mean, it's been a while? Nason's at fault too. She f she's free to use her magic crest, but she should know it was just a makeshift that won't even last seven days. Sakura says it like it's nothing, but it won't even last seven days. It sounds very out of place. Yeah. It's about to wear off, so you have to get properly treated. My magic can't solve the root problem, so I'll ask Ryder if she has any good ideas. Sakura looks sleepy. I can't reply. I can only convince myself that Sakura is saying strange things because she's about to fall asleep. You're there, right, Senpai? Yeah, I'm here. Good. Please stay by my side, Senpai. I have nightmares if I'm alone, so please... Sakura slowly closes her eyes. Her breathing becomes more gentle and she goes into a deep sleep. I turn off the light and leave her room. I saw Sakura fall asleep peacefully, but I don't, but I don't feel any peace of mind. So please, keep watch and be on your guard against me. I think that's what she said unconsciously, right before she fell asleep. Uh oh. Sakura. I'm coming in, Sakura. Douchebag Shinji. He opens the door without waiting for a reply. He has never waited for his younger sister's reply before opening this door. Wait, she's not home? What a slug. He clucks his tongue and walks into a room. Scratching at the wall, Mato Shinji wanders through his sister's room like a blind dog. Sakura, are you in the basement again? What are you doing down there, ignoring me? He keeps asking questions that will not be answered. There is no one in the room. His sister has not been home the past few days. It is obvious that the master of this room is not here, but Shinji wanders through it all the same. It's just like always. <laughs> it really is like always. 
He throws the clock that touches his hand. The sound of the shattering glass is more annoying than he thought. Where the hell are you, keeping secret from your brother? Why the hell is everyone doing as they please? He starts throwing things like mad. This is like always too. This outlet has been his daily routine for the past few years. It is his best opposition that began three years ago when he found out the truth. The Mato bloodline came to an end when he was born. The noble family lost its power, becoming mere humans. The only special thing is the accumulated knowledge. The once noble family of Magi is fated to perish in this far east country. He has known this since he was young. The Mato family was a family that passed down secret techniques, but it is all past tense now. As the Mato are no longer able to use magic, they are to blend into society as ordinary people. But he did not think so. Their magic circuit faded away, leaving them unable to perform their secret techniques. The bloodline of Magi ended for Mato in his father's generation, and he knows that he does not have the right to succeed the Mato name. But the Mato family still has the records. The bloodline perished, but the accumulated knowledge is not lost. That itself is special enough for the boy. He thinks he is different from others. The Mato family have been chosen. That will not change, even if they lose their power and cease to be magi. He was proud of himself because he was born into a special family to be raised in a special way. Even if he is a failure as a magus, he is a child born into the chosen family. But a new child slipped into the chosen family. His father adopted a girl who had none of her own. It all happened more than ten years ago. The girl named Sakura became his little sister from that day on. At first, he hated his new sibling. He did not want any outsiders coming into the special Mato household, but the boy started to accept his sister day by day. The girl named Sakura was silent and ordinary, no more capable than a guard dog. It was a waste of time to be hostile against someone like that, and, is more, and it is more charming if one is to consider her a servant. He looked through the books, memorizing magic he could not use, to remind himself that he was the Mato heir. He was the only one who could enter the study. His adopted sister could never be named the successor, so she had no right to trespass here. His sister would live as a normal human being, never being taught the family's surviving knowledge. This fact greatly satisfied his pride. A family of magi has only one successor. He knew that, so he did not question their separate upbringings. Only one could learn magic. Then it was only natural that his sister be raised apart. Yes. He felt sympathy for his sister. They lived in the same household and had the same parents, but he was the only one who could call himself special, and he pitied his sister for not being chosen. It is like a compassion of a superior being looking down onto others, and it is his most reliable pride. The brother treated his sister as a failure. The sister feared her brother and always looked down, as if avoiding his gaze. He thought it was because of, a sh he thought it was because of shame, and he despised and loved her for it at the same time, until he found out the truth. What? That was all he could manage when he accidentally found the room. A room he has never been told about. Knowledge that was never taught to him. Talent that was never given to him. Everything was in that room. A naked girl lay in the middle of the room. Around her were swarms of black worms and his terrifying grandfather. And his father glared at the boy as if he was a nuisance. An attitude he had never taken towards him. And that ended it. Everything he believed in, everything that constructed him was turned upside down. It was not him that was special, it was not his sister that was kept at a distance, it was not her that was pitiable, and it was not her that was looking down on the other person. His life completely changed. Since he no longer needed to hide anything, his father took a different attitude towards his son. He started spending more time with the boy's sister instead. His sister did not say anything, but would just hang her head like always. She still acted as though running away from his gaze when she would say, I'm sorry, Nissan. As if pitying him, she said it with the emotion that he once felt for his sister. <laughs> he laughed. It was funny. It was so funny that he wanted to kill. The one he had thought was his pet was actually his master, and he was just a fool. Which one was the funny one? It must be both. At that time, as he went back to the mansion with unsteady steps, he realized. The world had not been turned upside down. It had been like this all along. The inverted one, the one who was misunderstood, was him. It was just that he finally realized his own miserableness. The three years after that were only pain for him. His father died, and his grandfather only cared about Sakura. Mato Shinji became just like an heir in his house. He was treated as an object whose existence did not matter, and that was truly the case. The p she pitied the heir. She apologized. Though she never spoke the words aloud, she apologized every time she saw him. 
She apologized for taking Mato Shinji's place. Why are you apologizing? She could have just ignored him. Then he wouldn't have hated her, wouldn't have clung to hope. Sakura apologized. Apologizing means submitting something. Then you're mine from now on. Considering all the contempt he had endured, he saw nothing wrong in accepting this. So is this supposed to make me feel sympathy for this asshole? Huh. Is she still over at Emius? You're the successor of Mato, the noble successor of Mato. The room shows no signs of life, but that is to be expected. Mato Sakura's room is the underground worm's nest, and this is merely for show. The master of the room does not care how much he breaks the things in this room. Th this room is no different from the door plate that hangs at the entrance. Yeah, but you still apologize. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't disobey me if you think you're sorry. If you feel guilty, keep compensating for it. If you know you've been sold out to this house, be mine. He scratches the sheets, something that was his. Why did a doll that did not think or resist leave him? You. You took her, Emiya. That was his miscalculation. He knew she was attracted to Emiya Shiro. That thing that held no interest in anything started to have opinions after getting to know him. She gradually regained herself, and in the end, she left him. He trained her to never disobey him, and now she chooses a total stranger over her own brother. That's why I said it wasn't safe to have her over at Emius. But that old bastard spouted some bullshit about keeping watch on that house. His grandfather does not even try to take Sakura back. He said it is fine as is, and, moreover, confined him to this house. You watch. I'm going to make you pay for this, Sakura. You should never disobey me. That's right. If a doll is disobedient, he'll just reset the relationship to be like it was before. If she gained hope to become human. Yeah, I'll just have to destroy her hope again, just like before. He laughs. <laughs> the clouded window reflects a face as ghastly as a skull. Skull mask? Assassin? It's afternoon now. Tosca seems busy and Sakura's sleeping, so I should make dinner. My left arm moves even though it reacts slow, so it shouldn't hinder me if I'm to make something simple. Hmm, I guess I can make fried swordfish and simmered meat and potato. <laughs> fried swordfish? Is this like a customary uh, dish in Japan to cook swordfish and eat it? I've never heard of that, actually. I check the contents of the refrigerator and decide the menu. There are two additional people eating now, so the food gets used up pretty quickly. I should find some time to go to the shopping district tomorrow. Itadakimasu! Itadakimasu! Everyone must have liked having dinner ready when they came here, since they all seem to be in a good mood. Yep, we have a dedicated chef, Chef Shiro. I'm worried that Ryder isn't here, but I'm sure she has her reasons. Now, yeah, servants don't really need to eat anyway. Her top priority is guarding Sakura, so maybe she has no intention of spending time around Tosca, who may end up being her enemy. Will Ryder come eat later on? I'll pack it up and take her some if she doesn't come. Ryder seems to like desolate places, so I bet she's either in the dojo or the shed. Oh, so you're good at this. Sakura's good at western food and you're good at Japanese food? Tosca picks up the fried swordfish and looks at me in surprise. <laughs> she's gonna fucking eat the swordfish but like pick it up and eat it. I'm, I'm just imagining like a whole swordfish, like a fried swordfish whole, like she's gonna pick it up and just eat it whole, like as is. <laughs> that image alone. It's, wait, wait, is 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 this um, is this like the origin of the fish eater meme with uh, with Sakura eating a fish? I never understood that meme. Is, is this is this what it's about? Like her picking up a fish and eating it? Why isn't that with Tosca too? Like she does that too. It's golden fried with a scent of ginger with an elegant soy sauce taste. She seems to really like it. I like this one better. I'm glad you're good at cooking. Ilya eats the potatoes in satisfaction. It's unfortunate that she's only eating the potato part of the simmered meat and potato, but I'm glad she likes it. Wait. Sakura is tilting her head in confusion, chopsticks in hand. Sakura, what's wrong? You don't have any appetite? Oh, I do, but senpai, the simmered meat and potato doesn't have any sugar in it. It tastes strange. What? I made a stupid mistake on something I'm so used to cooking? Damn, hold on. I serve myself out of the big dish in the center and try some. Hmm? That's strange. This tastes normal. Sakura, does this taste weird? Weird? Didn't you use salt instead of sugar? 
I don't taste anything sweet. Really? Isn't it supposed to taste this way? Well, it does taste different because there's something in it to bring out the flavor, but this is something you can't readily copy and make. I don't know since this is the first time I've had this dish, but it's good. It's sweet and easy to eat. Sakura looks dissatisfied as she reaches out for seconds. One bite, two bites, three bites. Sakura. Huh? Oh, it seems I ate a piece that wasn't simmered. I'm sorry, I said something weird. Your food is good like always. Maybe this is a result of the crest worms? Sakura smiles and keeps eating. Sakura keeps eating like nothing happened. I was worried about Sakura's odd behavior, but she seemed well enough after that. Or at least pretended to be. In fact, she asked for seconds three times. <laughs> she kept eating and finished off the food while Tosca stared at her in surprise. <laughs> Ilya's not too happy about that. You motherfucker, you take my food. It's past 10 o'clock. It's about time. Let's get going, Shiro. Tosca finishes preparing and appears. I know. Please watch the house while we're gone, Sakura. Tosca and I head out to patrol the town as planned. It's stupid that this is our only measure against Zoken, but it's all we can do for now. We need to defeat Zoken, Assassin, Saber, and the Black Shadow. They aren't ones we can defeat head on. We have to sit tight until the countermeasure Tosca is preparing is completed. But we can't just stay at my house. According to the news this morning, Mato Zoken has started to attack ordinary people. We can't match them right now, but we should at least patrol the town so that there won't be any more victims. Good luck with that. We put our shoes on silently. We know how dangerous it is to go out into the town at night. Zoken is only after Sakura, but we should get in his way if we're walking about. In the worst case, it'll be a repeat of our encounter in the forest. Considering that, we can't be talking lightheartedly. Hey, what are you doing? Then, we don't have anything to spare, but Tosuke glares at me and... You don't need to see us off. Go back to your room, Sakura. No, she's not glaring at me. She's glaring at Sakura, who's standing at the... Who's standing in the hallway. Nesan, I'll go too. It's dangerous for you two to go out alone, so... Sakura. Sakura. That must be why she's here. I appreciate her concern, but our plan is already determined. No, you should know you're Zoken's target. Please stay here with Iliad and protect yourself. I know, but you can only use one arm, senpai, and Nesan doesn't have a servant, so... Don't be ridiculous, Sakura. It doesn't change the fact that you're our enemy. I can't trust you with my back when I don't know when you'll turn into Zoken's puppet. But, Nesan... You'll just concentrate on protecting yourself. If you feel sorry for us, please don't trouble us about this. Just let Ryder protect you and Ilya. Tosuka, you... Whoa, hey! Hey, don't just stand there. Let's get going. While we stand around, he could be out there attacking somebody else. Tosuka grabs my hand and drags me outside. Oh, just be careful and watch the house, Sakura. I'll leave Ilya to you. Sakura doesn't say anything and stands at the entrance, lonely. Uh-oh. She's gonna get mad. I'm gonna kill a bitch. Hey, wait, Tosuka. I'll follow you, so don't... So let me go already. <laughs> it's your fault for being slow. Tosuka lets go and comes to a halt. What's with that face? If you have something to say, then spit it out. And it's like that, and it's like this all of a sudden. Tosuka is acting defiantly. Man, if it bothers her that much, she shouldn't have said it in the first place. Man, then I'm saying it, Tosuka. It's about what happened now. But don't say such things to Sakura. Sakura isn't like that because she wants to be. I know, but that's why I have to be firm with her. If we aren't, Zoken will be sure to take advantage. I don't feel any sympathy towards Sakura. It doesn't concern me if she's Zoken's puppet, and I have nothing to do with what happened to her after she was adopted into the Mato family. It does no good for me to say anything about her problem. Tosuka? Look, I'm at your house not because Sakura is there, but because you're there. My goal is not to save Sakura, but to obtain the Holy Grail. I'll keep watching on Sakura for that goal, and I don't care even if she hates me for it. That's why I'll say things like that, and I'm going to keep treating her as my enemy. So it won't bother you at all if she hates you. Her feelings don't matter because she's a complete stranger? That's right. Do you have any complaints? You idiot. Of course I do. Man, this is not like Tosuka. She should be able to say it like it's nothing. Instead, she's clenching her fists like she's trying to convince herself. Alright, if you want to act that way, then go ahead. Sakura knows how you feel, no matter what kind of attitude you take towards her. Huh? What do you mean by that? 
I'm talking about how important soccer is to you. I'm an outsider and I notice it. I sh and so it should be obvious to her. That's a misunderstanding. I just... There's nothing to misunderstand. People can't get seriously mad about things they don't care about. You're strict to Sakura for a reason. You don't say it, but she's still your precious sister. What, what are you saying, you idiot? Stop saying such snobby things. Sosuke's face turns red with anger. But I don't feel the usual intensity, and I know why. Oh, was it a bother? It is a bother. Isn't it obvious? I see. And while I'm at it, I have something else to say. I want you and Sakura to get along. She likes you and you like her. So I don't like it when it's this awkward between you two. Hey now, she has to be my enemy. Making friends with her now won't do any good. I wouldn't even know where to start. Isn't it fine as is? Have confidence in yourself, Tosuka. Even I can tell you're being a good big sister. Enough with the chatting. We're going to the place they showed in the news this morning. Tosuka looks away and starts to walk. I reply to her absentmindedly and follow. Then, Shiro. She calls my name without looking at me. And she usually doesn't call our, us by our first name either. Um, thanks. That made me, um, happy. Tosuka grumbles, embarrassed. There's nobody at the Central Park. The park that's deserted even during the day is even quieter after the murder yesterday. The park is not a place for relaxation within the business district, and it is no different from a desert in an uncultivated land. A murder, huh? It seems like people are treating it as an accident rather than a murder case. Well, I guess you can't really call it a murder when you can't tell who died and what the missing body parts are. I still see traces of blood on the grass. It looks like a bucket full was spilled on four separate areas. The darkened patches have some distance between them, probably because the victims frantically tried to escape. Tosuka, you said this might be Zokin's doing, but what do you think now? Do you think so after coming- do you still think so after coming here? Let's see, I thought it might be the Black Shadow's doing, but it doesn't seem that way. All the mana in the area would be swallowed if that thing had appeared, but the magical energy here isn't exhausted. Well, I, I still think the incident here was an unexpected meal. That's all the information we can get out of this place. Tosuka and I leave the side of the tragedy behind us. Good job, we found absolutely nothing. We didn't find anything in Shinto. Maybe Zokin is not active tonight, probably because the incident yesterday was so vivid. The date's about to change. A riverside breeze blows by as we trudge home. And... Tosuka, Sakura is the successor of Mato, right? I suddenly feel like asking the question that was on my mind for a while. Why are you asking that now? I have nothing to hide. No, that's not what I miss. If she's the successor, that means she's a Magus, right? So I'm wondering what kind of magic she uses. Oh, I see now. Yeah, I hear Mato's magic is in blindings and coercions. I also hear that the command spell wouldn't have been possible without Mato. Oh, so Sakura's magic is restriction? But then, on that day... The magic Sakura used when the crest worm tortured her must have been Ryder's power. I don't think it's restriction. That's the Makiri's forbidden magic, and it's not their strong point. But it's meaningless to think about it. Sakura doesn't have the magical energy to use magic. The crest worm will feed the crest worm will feed on such excess energy first, so she shouldn't be able to use magic. I see, that's good. So how is Sakura in your eyes? Is she about as good as you, considering she's the Mato successor? We have about the same number of magic circuits. Did you forget they were sisters? Oh, that's right. That's why they wanted to adopt her in the first place. Oh, so she's about as good as you. I don't think so. My attribute is five elements, and hers is, Im and hers is an imaginary element. But the Manto family has a water attribute, so they changed her by force. What do you think would happen to a bird that has potential to fly if it's put in water? It'll die, or... Yes, adapting to the water would be all I could do. She would have had great success as a Magus of Tosca, but she's no different from you because she was forced to change into a Magus of Mato. No, you're much stronger than her because you train your body. Then let's say you and Sakura fought using magic. I'd win ten times out of ten. With her magical energy capacity, Sakura would never get past my barrier. I see. I couldn't figure out what kind of Magus Sakura is, but I got to know their power balance. Tosuka isn't one to bluff, so she must be speaking the truth. But I'm embarrassed. I never knew Sakura was a Magus, and I don't know how good she is. I'm a dumbass for pretending to be her guardian all this time. Hey now, the Crest Worm eats the magical energy in her, so you'd never know she was a Magus even if you're by her all the time. And she did her best not to let you know, so don't say such a thing in front of her, okay? 
She doesn't even need to tell me. Sakura is Sakura, even if she is a Magus. First of all, I'm not that skillful. No matter who Sakura may really be, I can only treat her like I always have. You're right. If you say so, I'll just treat her the same as always. I won't even think about asking for help as a Magus. That's fine with you, right? Of course. If you were going to rely on Sakura, I would have taken her to my house. Tosuka's kindness makes my heart jump. See, Tosuka really is a good sister. But I don't think that's possible. Sakura smiles when she's at your house. If you think about surprising, that's what surprised me the most. Then, a look of happiness on her face. She says something odd. Smile, but Sakura is, um, she's always like that. Yeah, it was needless worry on my part. I can't talk to her that much, so I watched her. I went to the archery club every day after she started coming to our school. Yeah, I knew that, but... Yeah, and I realized after a while that she never smiled. That's something I'm hearing for the first time, but I can't deny what she's saying. Come to think of it, Sakura always looked gloomy at school. Well, the only exception was when you were there. She smiled whenever you came to the archery club. In short, Sakura is only cheerful when you're in front of her. Her words should make me happy, but Sakura doesn't smile in front of people? They seem to hide a dangerous truth. It's past one o'clock when I return to my room. Phew. I sit down on my futon. Our patrol yielded nothing. All we did was confirm that this morning's news was real. Enemies we must defeat. Just thinking about them sends cold, nauseous feelings through me. Even a human can match Zoken or Assassin. But those two are different. I don't even know if the Black Shadow has a concept of death, and Saber is someone who we don't even stand a chance against. But as long as they're a victim, we can't just ignore them saying we can't beat them. Archer's arm, huh? I put my hand on the red cloth. I have a weapon. I don't know how far this will get me, but I do have a weapon. The question is if I can manage it, and if my body can withstand it. I guess a bit is fine. I untie the knot on the red cloth. Bad idea! The cloth loosens up, and blood flows into my arm. At that instant, I think I heard a beast howl. I'm stabbed. My whole body is pierced. Is this pain? If this is pain, then the pain I've experienced until now isn't pain. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. It hurts. The floor's ruggedness. The softness of the futon hurts. It feels like I'm sitting on a mountain of sorts. The air is, the air is poisonous, and I die three times as I breathe it in. Birds are chirping in the distance. The wind is strong. There's no moisture. My skin dries and turns into sand, flowing, scouring, crumbling. Tongs are inserted from the hallowed howls. Thirty-two enter where my shoulder should be. They carefully, accurately, and elaborately pierce my eternal jugular vein, trachea, and spinal spinal cord, sympathetic nervous system, lo lobus superior pul pulmonis, lobus me medius pulmonis dextri, lobus inferior pulmonis main artery, heart, diaphragm, spleen, stomach, liver, gallbladder, and colon. Jesus Christ. <laughs> It's crumbling. Time slows to an impossible crawl. I see three. I see sixty trillion cells crumbling apart at the rate of three, four knot per second. There is no pain. There is no pain. There is no pain. There is only fear. The end roll invades with amazing speed. The flashback stops with a fantastic image. Death before my eyes. Death past me. Death at the moment. The pain is not physical, but only the explosion of negation every time death is thrown at me. Oh my God! What is happening? I hear a sound. The sound of my head striking the floor. My eyes are hot. I realize I've been crying. Desperately, I stifle the scream building in my throat. I curl up, push my head against the floor, grab my left arm with my right hand, and just cry. I'm scared. The thing I've been missing since the fire ten years ago. I'm scared. A natural feeling for any living thing. I'm scared. For the first time in my life, I want to run away from my end. It's not because I, it's not because dying will hurt. It's not because I want to live. It's just because it fills me with dread. I tie up the red cloth. I tie the night tight so it'll never come loose again. No, this isn't good. I groan and cry. The priest said I'll die if I use my left arm. That's nonsense. I'll die if I take this cloth off. My body might be able to bear it, but my mind will die. 
My consciousness crumbled away when I loosened the cloth and my shoulder touched the outside air. It could not bear it. I cannot live without this cloth. No. If this, if this arm is a contradictory existence that people should not associate with, my body, its death foretold, runs to the terminal system. The ship, with a crack in, its, with a crack in the bilge, can only sink into the ocean depths. The passengers unaware, too late for anything. Uh, my breath is running wild. Uh, uh. I had a bad dream. I wipe the sweat off my forehead. I can't stand up. I stay coward, bearing the strange pain. Uh, I can't remember. My left arm hurts. It hurts so much that I want to cut it off. I try to recall why it hurts, but I can't remember how to recollect anything in the past. Uh, the pain goes away. I gather up my consciousness. It must be because I was asleep. The dispersed memories look as if they can be cooked nicely, just like chopped onions. What? What the fuck? See, I can add color with soy sauce, add flavor with pepper, and add some potato starch to complete the dish. <laughs> yes, of course. Ugh, that sounds nasty. I murmur to myself. My head is good for nothing, but I can still manage to come up with a conclusion. In short, I don't have to eat something that's not good. My left arm is already gone. Nobody relies on something that's not there. Therefore, Emiyashiro has no weapon. This foreign body is something I must suppress using all my life, and will contaminate me for the rest of my life. <laughs> Suppressing it with the cloth is meaningless. If I want to rid myself of this poison, there is only one way. Then cut it off. <laughs> but I still hold on to my left arm. A gun is pointed at my forehead, an image of a trigger. The trigger is my left arm. Once pulled, the gun will fire, blowing my brains from my skull. I shudder. I hold my breath and stare at the white wall. Clutching my arm, I lie down, then cut it off. I close my eyes. My whimpering finished, I decide to get some sleep for tomorrow. Jesus Christ. Maybe not. A small sound. I awaken to the sound of footsteps. I wake up my dozing mind. It's almost two o'clock. It hasn't even been thirty minutes since I fell asleep. I get up, still unconsciously holding on to my left arm. Sakura? Outside the room, I call out to the hallway where the footsteps came from. It's not that I know who's there. I just thought Sakura might be there. The door opens. Sakura steps through into my room. Again with this! Biting her lip in embarrassment, she looks down as if unsure of what to say. I'm sorry, senpai. I... again. Sakura apologizes. But I'm the one who should apologize. The reason why Sakura is here. I know well enough the pain she has to go through. The crest worm feeds on her magical energy, so Sakura periodically needs to receive more from Mamagas. Yep. I'm sorry. I should have gone to see you as soon as I came home. I'm sorry for making you suffer. I get up. What was I thinking? I was so caught up with my left arm that I forgot about Sakura. I can't be forgiven even if I apologize. Uh, senpai. Yeah, I want to make love to you, if that's alright with you. Okay. Is, is this, is this what this is going to be? This is, yep, yep, I knew it. Oh, okay. Oh, whoa. Senpai, are you alright? Oh, it's nothing, I just felt a bit dizzy. Damn, that's pitiful. I unconsciously used my left arm and was reminded of the pain. Still, it shouldn't hurt as long as I have the cloth on, so what am I frightened about? Oh, I have to take my clothes off. Can you take yours off too, Sakura? <laughs> I shake off the dizziness and look at her. Then. Oh my god. Okay, I think I can skip this. Okay, so we skipped the sex scene and now we're in another nightmare. Because every time Shiro has sex with Sakura, he obviously has to have a nightmare. It is, a, it is in a red sea. The familiar scenery is submerged in seawater, turning the town into an aquarium. Instead of air, something thick flows into the throat. The more it gasps for breath, the more the heavy, watery substance it sucks in. So this has to be underwater. It gasps out that it is painful. It originally lived on land. It cannot possibly live underwater. It tries to reach the surface, and it eventually reaches the highest place in the town. Oh, this is going back to the whole bird metaphor, isn't it? The suffocation does not abate. It looks down at the town, lungs burning from the lack of oxygen, and curses the peacefully sleeping town's people. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. There's no air here. There's no pain here. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. 
It drags corpses behind it. Its body is bright red with blood. It hurts. It hurts. Need more. It hurts. In its black hands are many corpses. The, the distorted hands grasp many dead bodies. Need more. Need more. Need more. Need more. It smashes them, dyeing itself red. Need more air. The air hurts. The water pressure is uncaring. The water pressure is unbearable. The smear it smears the red blood all over its body. It probably thinks that the blood is the only watertight protection it has to live in this water. It reaches out its twisted hands. Illuminated by the moon, the dark hand becomes a giant shadow and descends to crush the town. Ah! She wakes up. She's breathing hard from her restless sleep. Astonished by the dream's realism, she hugs, she hugs her feverish body. At that instant, her hands are wet with blood. Uh, uh. She shuts her eyes and pulls her hands away. Wait, wasn't she having sex with Shiro? Wouldn't she be in his room? But when she looks again, they are clean. Although she knows it was just a hallucination, she can't stop trembling. She trembles. She trembles like a broken machine. She trembles so violently that bolts might spill from her ears. All the parts in her body will spill out like that, and the image is so frightening that she cannot stop trembling. My face... Yeah, I have to go wash my face. She heads to the bathroom. She makes it only a few steps. Her quaking limbs will not follow her orders. She braces herself against the desk. Uh, uh. Her vision wavers. She can't make it to the door. She can't even see it clearly. She can't remember what kind of a dream she was having or why she got out of bed. Uh, uh. She's broken. She can't remember anything. She can't think of anything. There is nothing but lust and hunger. She wants hot skin, breath, sensation, penis, semen, and kind words. <laughs> Her empty but mushed up insides plead for more sex. Alright, so this is before the sex happened. Uh, uh. She lies on the desk and shakes her head. I thought Shiro was having that nightmare. Maybe he was, maybe he did see that, I'm not sure. Fear and infinite self-hatred. Something is wrong. Why hasn't she had enough? A few hours ago she was loved, just like in her fantasies, but it hasn't filled her up at all. Oh, okay, so this already happened. It felt great, and she thought there could be no greater happiness, but she's not the least bit satisfied. She's probably empty, and that's why he alone cannot fill her up. But she doesn't want anyone else. She wants to be his for much longer. She wanted it at the cost of time, emotion, and other people. So why didn't she do so? And she naturally realizes that she can eliminate all the things she just thought about. Oh. Serial killer mode activated. She feels dizzy. It's not from. F it's not so far-fetched. What's scary is that she really thought that it would be fun. Uh, uh, uh. She leans on the desk. She keeps her collapsing body steady. The frightening dream becomes clearer every day. The frightening dream becomes less frightening every day. She's breaking down. Until now, she was it was only her body. But now, she's beginning to go mad. Uh, uh, uh. Moans escape her mouth. Her vague memory is no problem. It doesn't matter if she cannot remember what happened a few hours ago. She's not scared of being in bed forever. She's terrified of becoming something else. She doesn't want to become a bad person. If she slowly breaks down like this, she will go crazy in the end. She will probably become something that will cause him the most trouble. That's what terrifies her. It's scary to go crazy. It's more scary than anything else. If she does, he will not touch her, nor will he love her. She won't be able to be with him. She won't even know if she is with him. Not only that, if she loses her mind, he will be with another woman. She doesn't want that. She really doesn't want that. She always thought he would be with someone else, someone better suited to him, but she can no longer accept that. Because he is already hers. That's why it's frightening. She's scared of what she might do. <laughs> she knows, yet there's no salvation. She cannot tell him of this dysfunction. If she tells him, it will be back to the cold for her. She cannot return to the cold now that she has known warmth. She wants to, keeps smiling at him, but she knows what will be lost if this continues. Her wish is just a desire. She wishes for one person's happiness, yet her happiness requires the ruin of that same person. If she cannot do so, she should just break down and disappear. If she's going to go crazy, she should disappear now and become a monster in a place with no people. That should be the best choice. But she still clings to it. She wishes for more because it's warm and happy here. So why? Why is such a normal desire forbidden to her? No, 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 no. She shakes off her weakness. She's not envious. She's not holding any grudges. She just justifies her decision, saying that she merely wants to stay here. No, this isn't me. 
She shakes her head in denial. She shuts her dark mind with an empty head. There are no happy endings. She turns her eyes away from the obvious conclusion. <laughs> her hazy mind is already experiencing another nightmare. Forcing down her wish to be saved, she keeps on crying. Death and despair await 